Hey guys, welcome back. I want to talk to you about my workflow for avatars between Clothe 3D and Death Studio. If you guys like this kind of content and want more, please support the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, check the link in the description for Patreon and all that good stuff. But right now, I want to talk to you about my avatar workflow. So, you see on the left, this is my Clothe 3D avatar. And on the right, I have an avatar that I've taken from Daz. And the main difference is the posture and the the definition of each of the bodies if you look on the left this guy has um much less like muscular definition but is probably more like a mannequin than an actual avatar let's say and there's some weird kind of shaping in his back and the scale on the hips looks a bit weird but what is good about this is if i go into my avatar editor and check this out I can input all my measurements and get like the exact size of this that I want. So if I'm making something for myself or for a client or for a model or someone, and I, I need the, I need them in my computer. Then I'm using this avatar editor to set up all my measurements. So it's good because you can see exactly where you need to measure around the body to, you know, get the correct measurements. Um, so that you're making like an accurate representation, but I prefer to work with an avatar like on the right, which has a much nicer kind of posture and more muscular definition that you would expect to see on a person rather than on more of a kind of flat mannequin like this. This is quite flat in comparison. Um, the way that I get this all to work is in uh, Daz Studio. So um, the first thing I would do is export this guy to Daz and then I'll show you how we can set up something like this. So for now I'll just delete this additional avatar. Actually I'll just show you guys before I delete him. Um, if I align them up on top of each other they're pretty much exactly the same like their face is in the same position their head is in the same position there's a bit of a difference to their legs and arm posing but in general they have the same size body and if i want to check the measurements of this avatar because this guy's not set up obviously with the clo 3d um avatar editing system if i want to measure this guy and check any of those uh, measurements on him um, I can do so with this little tape measure over here. So go over to basic measure and then you can just click some points. Uh, make kind of, you know, if I want to measure around the waist, um, I could do something like this. And then I know exactly what my measurements are going to be. So I can still measure this guy pretty accurately in Clow when I've made him in, you know, another software. But for now, let's get him into Daz. So just delete this avatar because I just want one. I'm going to go file, export, obj. I'm going to find a place that I want to save it so I can put this in my avatar folder. So that's like clove example. And then I'm going to click save. I want this select all avatars button checked. The rest of this doesn't really matter right now because there's no garment or clothing in there to export. The thing we want to check is this option here that says basic. Um, the scale is set to meters right now, which is for Blender, which is good, but we don't want that. We want this set to centimeters for Dust Studio, and it even says Dust Studio right there. So set this to centimeters. Um, again, the rest of it we don't need to be that concerned about. The axes we can leave as they are, the rest we can leave it as it is, and just click OK to export this avatar. Then we want to go into Daz. So if you've used Daz before, Welcome back. If you've not, um, I'm not going to touch much on Daz today other than the, this avatar system. So um, maybe in future videos I'll talk more about Daz. But for now, it's going to be file, import, and then we're going to check where our mesh is saved. So I have some other avatars in this folder, but this is the one I want, the one from Clo, and I'm just going to click open. And then you will get this import box appear. Um, you can set this to. Um, one unit is one centimeter, which should be the studio default. So set this to the studio, the, the axis should be the same. The rest of this should be fine. And just click accept. And then your clear avatar is going to appear in Daz. So we can use this as a template to kind of build our, um, better avatar around. So in order to do this, we're going to bring in any figure if you've already downloaded some guys from does then work with them or if you want to use the base one you can do so if i go into smart content and into figures 
these are all the characters that I have downloaded in the past that I could work with. You can use the Genesis default one, so like there's a developer load that you can use here. If you don't want to pay and download additional characters, I understand. Um, for me, I'm going to bring it in Owen because he's a good one to start with most of the time. And let him load, and there we go. So for now, everything is a little bit difficult to see because they're the same kind of shade and they're the same thing that we're looking at. So if I look at my claw example, I go down to surfaces on the side here. This is where I can edit the material of this avatar. Under this material, we could add a color. So let's say we want to make him red just to be able to see him a bit better. And then if I scroll down, we want to look for cut out opacity. Um, and we can just drag this down a bit and we can start to make that avatar transparent. And this is going to be useful for when we're trying to like scale these things together. So um, to do the scaling, you want to select your um, Daz avatar, so Owen in this instance. And I'm going to go to shaping and I can look under actor. I can start to blend him with other characters that I've got. So if I want to add some of this body type, I can blend that in um, or I can take down some of the Owen body or whatever. Um, but what I'm going to look at is these um, options all here. I've downloaded some morph packs, to be quite honest, because it allows me a lot greater um, flexibility when we're creating these characters. So just to show you guys, um, I downloaded the Genesis 8 male body morphs. It's only 20 bucks and it has been very useful in my avatar production process. And it just allows you to, you know, create way better um shape and silhouette on your avatar depending on what body type they've got so you know that's can be useful and there's the same thing for the women's as well so if you want different body shape for women there's the same uh morph pack here so just a note i am using that that's what you will see on the side here so any of these red icons um they're from the the pack that i've downloaded and any of the purple ones should be there in daz by default so the first thing that i want to check is i can just type in here height and just make Owen the same height as my uh, initial avatar. So just make him taller. Um, I can change the pose a bit if his legs are in the wrong, in like a different position, which they are now. So go to Owen. We can go down to posing. And then I'm just going to type in here with the Owen selected on the right side. Um, legs. And then leg spread. So again, these purple ones are all kind of default in avatar, in, uh, blend in Daz even, excuse me, many softwares I'm working with. And these uh, should be available for everyone. The The red sliders that I will use occasionally are from the, the morph packs that I downloaded. And um, we can do the same for the arms as well. So arms up and down to just start to align this back together because you see now Owen is relatively slimmer than the avatar I got from Clone and his arms are a bit shorter. So if we go back to shaping on the right side here, we can look at under arms and then I'm just going to add a little bit into the arms length to make his arms a bit longer. We can go to hands and the hand propagating scale we can make a bit bigger because his hands look quite small compared to my original avatar. Um, I think I might pose the arms front and back as well. So we have um, up and down here to make them, you know, up and down. And then front and back, we'll swing them back and forth. So I'm just going to swing them a little bit forward like this. Um, while we're in this posing area, there's something to notice a little bit. Um, we might want to move his chest up a little bit. So if we want to move just based on the bones, um, I'm going to turn off the visibility of this claw example. I'm going to click the area that I want to move. Uh, so in this example, I might want to move his chest. And then I can just roll these sliders in the top left up here to kind of adjust his pose a little bit, um, depending on what I want his chest to be. So then we might want to move his head back a little bit. Get him in the same position. 
Um, the idea though is now that we have him generally aligned, we want to just make him thicker or thinner, depending on how you're doing this, um, to make him fit the same shape as our Color 3D avatar. So I'll select uh, Owen again. I'll go back to shaping. We can go onto the actor and then look at some of these body types. So if we want him to feel a little bit bigger and more muscular, we could add into this bodybuilding um, slider right here a little bit. Um, that's thickened his arms up a bit and his legs look pretty, pretty much the right size, but his hips are very small. So like if you see here, this red one is our original line and the white one underneath is the, you know, our new avatar. So we could go to hip and go to glute size and make that bigger. Um, his body looks in general quite thin in the middle. So we might want to make his waist a bit bigger too. Uh, we have a waist option here. There's a lot of sliders that start to happen uh, when you download these packs, so you know, be be warned. Um, we can change the torso length as well if we want, if his body's a bit short. Adjust the stomach depth. And then just generally tweak until we get this in the right uh, position. I think his legs need to be a bit longer. Just bring him up a bit. Maybe down a bit. Yeah, okay, so his legs were a little bit long. Is he too short now? Okay, no, he looks good height-wise. Um, I'm just going to add in a bit, because if we see on the front here, there's a lot of thickness that we've kind of lost in our new avatar, but then there's some in the back that we've, I guess, gained. Um, so let's just look at the hips quickly. Back to the waist. Can I see this slider right in the bottom? Whip. We can increase a little bit the hip width as well. We could increase a little bit. Yes. There we go. And I think in general, we're not that far off. I might just make his torso a little bit longer. So let's type in torso length. Just increase it a little bit so that my uh, shoulders line up correctly and the chest depth looks pretty good. So this has given me something pretty close to my original Clo 3D avatar. So the more I tweak this, the, the closer I can get. But for now, I think you guys understand what it is that I'm trying to achieve here. Um, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the clo example and just leave myself with uh, my uh, updated um, avatar. Again, if you want to, you know, change anything about the character, the face, the skin textures or anything, that would be the time to do it. And then if we want to export this back into clo, this is, again, relatively straightforward. So we go File, Export. Go into the folder we have before, and I'm just going to call this new DAS avatar. Save. And then in our export options, we can set this to, again, DAS Studio. Because we're going back into Clo. Clo and DAS both work in centimeters, so this is set to 100% is correct. One centimeter is one unit, this is all correct. Our axes, we don't touch. And the rest of this, in general, I'm just going to leave as it is and then click accept. And then this will just quickly export into my folder. If I then jump back into Clo, um, and go file, import, and then avatar, or we just drag the guy in. Let's do that. So I'll just drag in my OBJ into the screen over here. I'm gonna add him as an avatar and the unit is going to be set to Dash Studio again to make this work correctly. Leave the rest of it as it is and just click OK. And this will import just fine. There's one thing just to be aware of, right? One small import setting that might mess you guys up in the future. So import this again. Again, units, centimeters, everything is fine. The one thing that can get weird is translation. So if you set this to align bottom to ground, if that's checked, 
you're gonna shift a little bit your avatar so if you ever want to take anything back to daz out of clo you'll have moved your avatar a bit so just don't check this box align bottom to ground leave that unchecked let it import exactly where it needs to import and then just click okay and now we should have our two avatars in the same space and uh Oh, I think I just added one. But now we have our avatar here. If I want to check any of those measurements, like I said before, we can start to measure this avatar and just be like, okay, his waist measurement is the right length. His center front measurement is the right length of, for whatever example. But now I have a much nicer kind of uh, avatar to work with than the one that comes by default in Clo 3D. So that is my um, avatar process. I'm going to make a video showing you guys how to export from Clo and bring everything into DAS because it can be quite a nice rendering uh, environment sometimes. So look for that in one of the next videos.